What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying your lives to the fullest today. Today I am reviewing the 2023 Chevy Colorado Trail Boss. Huge thank you to Dwayne Ferguson over at Coons Tyson Chevy Buick GMC for allowing me to do this review for you guys today. If you guys are interested in this particular Colorado or any GM product with the exception of Cadillac, I'll be sure to have Dwayne's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. Diving right into the video, I did want to go over a couple of things before we got into the exterior and the performance. I'm sure you guys would rather look at the truck than look at me. So for 2023, the Colorado as a whole did get a redesigned exterior as well as a redesigned interior with new engine options. And then also the only cab and bed configuration that you guys can get is the crew cab short box for 2023. Same goes for if you guys got a work truck. Again, crew cab short box only configuration for 2023. Now, like I mentioned, this is a 2023 Colorado Trail Boss and this particular one has been painted in sand dune metallic, which in my opinion, complements the Trail Boss very, very nicely, especially with that wheel and tire setup. The Trail Boss is based off of the work truck. So what you guys get are halogen headlights with IntelliBeam. IntelliBeam is just a fancy way of saying automatic high beams and then to the left, of your headlights is where you will find your standard halogen turn signals and then on this side the turn signals would be to the right of that headlight now taking a step back let's take a look at the entire front end so like i just mentioned to you guys this is based off of the work truck and this is kind of where you can see that bleed into the trail boss so the majority of the front end is satin black which in my opinion on the trail boss looks really sweet honestly it looks like an off-road vehicle but at the center of your front end you guys get a satin black front grille with your black bow tie emblem and then just to the right of your black bow tie emblem you find your trail boss emblem now this particular trail boss has been optioned with the 950 dollars technology package and what that gives you guys is this forward-facing camera now that forward-facing camera works with your 360 degree view camera system again that comes with the technology package that is where your forward facing camera is just beneath your bow tie emblem now i'm going to take a step back again and give you guys a full view of the front end because just below your camera is where you'll find this gray trim piece um, it's basically like a metallic gray trim piece it looks nice and it kind of just adds an element of color uh, to the front end. And then beneath that with the Trail Boss, you guys do get two frame mounted recovery hooks to the right and the left of your license plate. There's one over there. Then you get one on the driver's side, obviously, as well. And you guys may be asking, you know, what makes the Trail Boss the Trail Boss? So basically, the Trail Boss gets a two inch lift from factory as well as a three inch wider track than what you would find on the work truck and the LT trim levels to basically make this thing, you know, a very, very good off roader. And if this isn't quite enough for you guys, there is the Z71 as well as the ZR2. But working our way, down the side you guys do get satin black wheel arch moldings and then this is the standard wheel and tire setup that you guys get with the trail boss i'll get into the other wheel and tire options here in a minute but you guys do get 18 inch gloss black wheels and they are wrapped in a 265 65 goodyear wrangler territory all-terrain tire give you guys a view of the tread pattern on that tire there real quick i think the sidewall looks ultra aggressive especially with some of that tire shine on there and i also just really like the wheel design uh, that comes standard on the trail boss I, honestly i think these are the wheels that you guys are probably going to want to get but you guys do have a few other wheel and tire options ranging from again these are 18 inch wheels and you guys could get 22 inch wheels but if you guys are getting the Trail Boss, what's the point of getting the 22s? If you're going to get the 22 inch wheels, you might as well just get a Silverado RST or something like that. Because this is, you know, basically supposed to be an off roader. And 22 inch wheels, yeah, that doesn't help off road. Working our way up to our side view mirrors, you guys do get gloss black mirror caps and they are power adjustable as standard. This is where the options come in on the side view mirrors. So with the $505 safety package, you guys do get heated exterior mirrors mirrors with blind spot monitoring blind spot monitoring on the upper left hand side of your driver side mirror and then over there on the upper right hand side of your passenger side mirror this one also again does have the 950 dollar technology package what you guys get with that is the 360 degree view camera system so you get a camera on your side view mirrors located about right there now let's do a little side profile action of the trail boss again the sand dune metallic looks sweet even here on camera which normally the camera doesn't pick up uh 
colors like that. I mean, obviously it's not doing the best job, but it still does look pretty sweet. I'm looking at the uh, camera screen right now and it just looks really, really sweet on the trail boss. But you guys do get black window trim as well as black door handles. You guys get your Chrome Colorado badging on your front two doors. That is a closer look at your Colorado badging. And then you also do get a capless filler neck on your driver's side bedside. Opening that up, that is what that looks like. I believe 87 octane will do you just fine. Again, you get your satin black wheel arch molding. You have your bedside trail boss badging. I really like the way the trail boss badging looks. Normally, I'm not a fan of like the FX4 badging on the Fords, unless it's with the black appearance package, but I think that looks really, really sweet. And then also just take a look at the redesigned bedside. I love the new angles on the Colorado. They start from the front and then they just really work very very well from the back to the front to give this thing an ultra aggressive look especially here on the tailgate as well i know the camera doesn't do it justice but over here this particular one also does have the 375 dollars trail boss convenience package and what that gives you is a sliding and defrosting rear window just keep in mind the sliding rear window is a manual rear window so it is not power and then this particular one also does have the 475 dollars spray in bed liner and you guys get eight tie down hooks back here two in each corner get your chevy emblem protruding at the front of the bed honestly i think this is like a five foot two inch long bed um so you know you can fit pretty much everything you need to in here the reality is you don't need a bed much bigger than this unless you guys are going to be doing you know some serious work like contracting uh but halogen taillights come standard with the trail boss and that is all you can get you have your backup camera located right here now this particular one also does have the 545 dollar trail boss convenience package too and what that gives you is the easy lift and lower as well as a locking tailgate and that is what uh, the locking tailgate looks like right there. You have Chevrolet embossed into the center of the tailgate with your Colorado badging on the lower left-hand side. Again, that is also in chrome. Taking a little bit of a step back, we'll come down just a tad. You guys do get a gloss black rear bumper. Now this one again also has the $505 safety package. So you get four backup sensors total. That's one, two, three and four somebody gave me a little bit of poo poo for counting out the sensors or like we know how to count out sensors i know i just wanted to show you guys kind of the location of which these sensors are in and then you guys do get a corner step bumper uh, which is new for the 2023 model year and if you guys were wondering about the max tow capacity of this particular colorado trail boss or really all colorado trail bosses it is 7700 pounds a couple other things i wanted to mention while we work our way down just a tad you uh also do get a 342 axle ratio as well as an auto locking rear differential and a two speed transfer case for four wheel drive high and four wheel drive low last but not least i might as well point these out you get a four pin connector as well as a seven pin connector and honestly a 7700 pound max tow capacity in my opinion is very very impressive especially considering this is a mid-size truck this isn't a full-size truck and you know i'm going to call out somebody in particular the honda ridgeline's max tow capacity is 5,000 pounds this is 2700 pounds more than the honda ridgeline and i believe like the uh yukons the tahos and stuff like that their tow capacity isn't that much more than what we have here today with the colorado i believe those are like 8,000 pounds maybe 8600 pounds uh, on those but let me know what you guys think of the redesigned 2023 colorado trail boss in the comment section down below but let's move into performance Hop and open that hood reveals that 2.7 liter turbo plus four cylinder that makes 310 horsepower and 391 pound feet of torque. It is mated to an eight speed automatic transmission for a zero to 60 time in 6.5 seconds. If you guys were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 17 miles per gallon in the city, 21 on the highway for 19 miles per gallon combined with four wheel drive. Just keep in mind, you guys can only get two wheel drive with the work truck and the LT trim levels now. So everything um, from the trail boss on up is all four wheel drive only and again the only configuration is crew cab short bed but if you guys are enjoying the video so far today please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button i am now on my journey to a hundred thousand subscribers and i cannot do that without your guys' help so again if you guys have taken anything from this video give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button but let's move into the interior
Moving on into the interior, wanted to show you guys a couple of the functions on the key fob as well as what the key fob looked like. So you got your lock function, your unlock function, your panic function, and then this is a look at the key fob. You do get remote access, but you do not get keyless access. So you do have to press the unlock button in order to get into the vehicle. And now let's take a look at what the Colorado has to offer here. So you do get a vinyl wrapped armrest with a little bit of padding. And then the rest of the door panel is a black plastic material. You get a black door handle on and your lock functions power side view mirror controls here you get an automatic up and down driver window but all the other windows are automatic down only you get a great spot you could set a phone there and then you could fit a smart water bottle in that cup holder there and then also uh, i mentioned this package earlier on in the video but i did not mention this part of it with the 545 dollar trail boss convenience package too you guys do get an eight-way power driver seat with two-way power lumbar this is what the seats look like themselves. And now we might as well step into the interior and see what is new for the 2023 model year. So you guys do get push button start. So all you gotta do is have your key fob in the interior, push your foot down on the brake and then push to start. And that is what it sounds like and looks like when you fire this thing up. But down here, you got your integrated trailer brake controller. This scroll knob is to brighten and or dim your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons. You do get a manual tilting steering wheel, but it does not telescope. So it goes down, it goes up, but it will not come towards you or away from you. So just tilting only up and down. Now let's take a look at our turn signal stock and take a listen to the turn signal itself. That is what the turn signal sounds like. But not only is this your turn signal control stock, this is also your windshield wiper control stock and your high beam control stock. So obviously pull back for high beams and then you got your windshield washer by pushing on that. And that will wash the windshield. And then if you guys just push once, that will basically just like wipe the windshield. Kind of, kind of a cool little uh, feature right there. And then zooming out just a tad, this is what your steering wheel looks like. It is a redesigned steering wheel again for 2023. Got your black bow tie emblem at the center let's take a listen to the horn that is what the horn sounds like for 2023 now on the left hand side of your steering wheel you have your adaptive cruise control settings like i mentioned earlier on in the video this does have the 950 dollars technology package and if you want adaptive cruise control you do have to opt for that package and then coming on this side of your steering wheel these controls are not only to control like um your different sources and stuff and speaking to the vehicle and picking up and hanging up on phone calls but this is also to control your new for 20 2023 eight inch digital gauge cluster before we get into the gauge cluster on this side of the steering wheel you have your tuning controls and then on the right hand side of the steering wheel you have your volume controls again this is volume up and this is to volume down now let's go throughout our eight inch gauge cluster so over here you have your trans fluid temperature this is your fuel gauge over here you got your oil pressure no that's your oil temperature and then that is your coolant temperature that is your odometer that's your transmission status that is the fuel range down here that lets us know that we are in two-wheel drive right there and then big at the center you got your rpm gauge also known as your tachometer and then you got your digital speedometer readout again at the center to control that screen you you gotta press on this button right here and that will bring you into this trip information screen. Click on that button again. You can go into your audio stuff, click on that stuff again. You had your different uh, like um, pitch and roll stuff. I'll go back into that. Get your pitch and roll, your steering angle, and it lets you know um, your transfer cases in two wheel drive, four wheel drive, uh, or four wheel drive low. And then you can just have your calm screen, which is basically just your digital speedometer readout, your ambient exterior temperature, speed limit sign, um, driving assistance features, your compass, and your digital speedometer readout. Uh, but really, that's kind of about it. You can go between your different radio favorites uh, and stuff like that. And then you can also go into your phone stuff. So you can pick up on a phone call, hang up on a phone call, and go into your phone screen by pressing on that. I believe this switches you between your different radio and media stuff. So you can go between your different AM, FM, XM, USB, Google News, podcast, Bluetooth, audio, etc. And then that is to speak to the vehicle. And that's kind of about it for the steering wheel and the gauge cluster. This was my vehicle. 
I would probably have it on this screen at all times. But working our way to the right, again, this is also new for 2023, and this is the 11.3 inch infotainment system with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, and it is a Google-based system. Let's go throughout it. I'm gonna go throughout it rather quickly. I'm not really gonna go in depth, but this is your home screen. So you get your audio, your maps, your phone, trailering, Google Assistant, Play Store. This is your wireless Apple CarPlay. This is your wireless Android Auto. You can go to your settings. Uh, this is a Wi-Fi hotspot capable vehicle. You can go into your vehicle info stuff. Uh, I don't know how much time I really wanna spend on that, but you guys can see you can go into your tires and brakes. You can go into your fluids. This is actually pretty cool, to be honest with you. You can go into your engine stuff. You get a couple of screens of the engine stuff. Um, honestly, I think that is kind of pretty cool, in my personal opinion. And then I'm gonna click that home button. And then you can go into my Chevrolet, off-road. Let's go into off-road because this is the trail boss after all. This is like your Baja. This is like your terrain. And then this is overlanding. Pretty cool. Drive mode is in normal at the moment, but um, I think that is actually pretty cool. I think I just saw my coordinates over here. That looks like the exact coordinates of which I am at at the moment. I think that's pretty cool. Ambient exterior temperature, and then that is the current time. These are your different shortcut buttons up here. So you got your home, audio, navigation, phone, and vehicle. Um, so you can go in between your different vehicle settings and stuff like that. One thing I did notice is that I think now to turn like your um, lights and stuff, like your forward lights, I think you have to go throughout the screen. So yeah, you have to, to turn your headlights on, off, or into automatic mode, you now have to control that throughout the screen. I personally think that's a big miss. I definitely like my physical headlight buttons. I mean, that is something that I should be able to access instantly because that is very important. I'd rather not have to go throughout a screen, um, but anyways, that you do have to go throughout the screen to turn your headlight stuff on. Um, but then these are all your different settings and stuff like that, drive and park, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, that is what that screen looks like. I guess it is a pretty easy button. All you gotta do is click that and that, but that's just two more steps than I would have to do if there was a physical headlight button or knob. But anyway, that's kind of about it for that screen. You got your volume knob up top here. You do get single zone climate with the trail boss fan knob, temperature knob, and then all these controls down here. They are um, piano black, so it is kind of hard for the camera to pick it up, but that is what that looks like. Under that, two HVAC vents. This is to turn your auto stop start system on or off. This is your hazard button, and then this is your lane keeping system on or off. Coming down just a tad, USB A port and a USB C port, as well as a great spot you can set your phone. I do have an iPhone 14 Pro Max, and it fits down in there, no problem. This is your gear shifter selector, um, and then you can upshift and or downshift the transmission. This is to upshift, this is to downshift. Coming all the way down is low, and that is where you can shift between your different gears. And then over here, this is what your uh, drive mode selector looks like. And then you can also go in between two high, four high, and four low. And then if you go into that, that is four wheel drive automatic. And then click in, uh, or actually uh, turning this to the right, you have your different drive modes. So quick going all the way to the left, you get your normal mode, you have your off-road mode, you have your tow haul mode. I think it's pretty cool that it's changing um, the different like screens on here. You got your terrain mode, go back over, you get your terrain mode and then you have your normal mode. I think that's pretty cool. And I like how it switches uh, like the theme of the Colorado uh, dependent on which drive mode you're in. That is pretty cool. I know it might be a little gimmicky, but it is honestly pretty cool. Coming down just a tad, this is your electronic parking brake. You have two cup holders. And I think you also have a spot you could set your phone at the center of those two cup holders. Yep, my phone fits down in there totally fine. And then you get a nicely padded armrest. Opening the armrest up, you get a divider. Taking that divider out, I think all you get down here is a 12 volt power outlet. Yep. And then let's see, I would say about 65% of my forearm fits down in there. So honestly, uh, definitely an acceptable amount of storage space down in there, especially considering this is a mid-sized truck. You do not get a lockable glove box, but let's see what the size of the glove box is like. Honestly, that is a rather large glove box. You can fit exactly what you need to down there other than your owner's manual and stuff like that. You get this sticker right here. Not quite sure what the sticker says, but now you guys can read it yourselves. You get an Opu handle for the front passenger. The driver does not get one, but you do get an auto dimming rear view mirror. You get your OnStar stuff. 
lets you know if your passenger airbag is on or off. And then you have your different lights, either lights all the way on, lights all the way off, or lights when you open up the door. Get a little clip right here. You can set money, registration, or any small paper product. Opening this up, you get a vanity mirror, but you do not get any vanity lights. Let's see if this slides. No, this does not slide forward and it does not slide backwards. Normally, American vehicles do, uh, but this one doesn't. Bluetooth mic pickup for your Bluetooth phone. The passenger side gets the same exact thing over there. And really, that's kind of about it for what's going on up here at the front end. Now I'm gonna throw the window sticker on screen. You guys can see all the different standard safety stuff. You guys can take a look at the different options and the safety stuff that comes with those different options. I'll put that on screen for you guys to take a look at now. Pause your screen, take a look at that stuff. But I'm just basically gonna highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2023 Colorado Trail Boss is spec'd is, $42,115, honestly, considering that this is, you know, it's not the nicest vehicle uh, on the road at that price point, but for what you get, you get a really good off-roader, you get something that looks great, you get a digital gauge cluster, you get the nice big screen with the wireless Apple CarPlay, with the wireless Android Auto, it pretty much has everything that you need. The seats are comfortable, I think that is a very, very good value at $42,000. Again, that's just my personal opinion. You guys can let me know what you think in the comments down below but before we get into the drive i do want to show you guys what we got going on in these rear seats door panel back here looks very similar to what you would find in the front you can set a deer park water bottle there automatic down windows in the back only but they do go all the way down black door handle and then this is what the seats look like back here let's see i don't know if you can fold them up maybe you can okay looks like you can um, but i do have to pull up on this bear with me here for a second while i do that and then you get some partitioned storage. You get your jack and stuff under there. You could set your jumper cables right here if you wanted to. Um, honestly, for what it is, you can fit what you need to back here. But your dog's not going to be too comfortable if it tries to lay down there. You'd rather have your dog uh, on the seats. You do not get a center fold down armrest. And you do get a manual sliding and defrosting rear window. That is what that looks like. I'm not going to open it up because I got the dealer tag behind there. Taking a look at these rear seats, I am adjusted behind myself. I've got a little bit of leg room. I've got a little bit of knee room, but I would say that I think there is more leg room in knee room um, than what I found in the Frontier Pro 4X. And I also think that the seats are reclined more than what the Pro 4X's seats were like in the back. So it's definitely more comfortable back here for me. Got two cup holders here. Another spot you could set your phone down in there. You get two HVAC vents. Uh, is there any connectivity back here? There is no connectivity back here. There's no seat back pockets behind these seats. You get your dome light up top here and you get an OPU panel and the passenger side also gets an OPU panel. But you know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior of the Trail Boss. So I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I will see you guys in the driver's seat. All right guys, and now on to the driving portion of the review. And honestly, for what it is, for it being like, you know, rather, not like the most beefy off-roader, but a mild off-roader, it rides and behaves very, very well on the streets. And I always say this, in pretty much every video that I do with a GM vehicle is that they just, they have their suspension games down. Their suspensions are just so good and they can do pretty much everything. You know, this thing handles like well, it's not like a ton of body roll considering what it is. Um, like going around this turn, no problems for it. It's not like too top heavy or anything like that. So GM, your suspensions are awesome. I always say that in all of my videos. Another thing I wanted to say is that I love the updated interior. This, uh, like the 2020, 2021, 2022, was in serious need of an upgrade on the outside and on the inside. And I think Chevy did a very good job with that. Now, I know the 2.7 liter four cylinder gets a lot of hate. Um, and the EcoBoost, you know, were the same when they first came out as well. But honestly, this motor, is actually pretty good you know it's got like a good amount of power low end it's got a good amount of power high end transmission works great like it's not too clunky or anything like that here i'll give you guys a little acceleration so you guys can take a look at what i'm talking about and i'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to hear it but you can hear the turbo whistle you hear it 
listen, I'll get it on it here in a second when I'm straightened out. And just take a listen. Here, build it. That's pretty cool, and I always like that. It's like it, it's kind of like a diesel kind of sound. It's it's really really cool, and I like how on certain vehicles, like not all vehicles with a turbo, you can hear the turbo whistle, but I like when manufacturers incorporate a turbo whistle that you can actually hear because it adds to the driving experience. It makes it a little bit more fun. And honestly, me being a car truck person, um, that's something that I personally appreciate. Now, another thing I wanted to mention is that comparing this to the Frontier Pro 4X I did a video with, um, I think, this is a lot more comfortable. Definitely more comfortable. Let's take a listen. And this thing also just feels like it has more power than that Frontier Pro 4X as well. You know, I know I can't like directly compare this to that Frontier Pro 4X because that one was like 50K, whereas this one's like 42. And like I mentioned earlier on in the video, for $42,000, I'd say that you get a pretty nice vehicle. And you know, I did a video yesterday with a 2023 F350 XLT, uh, which is the new updated Super Duty. And what I said in that video is that you pretty much get everything that you need, but you don't get the things that you don't need. And that's kind of the same thing with this is like, yeah, you don't get all the frills, you don't get all the fancy features and all that kind of stuff, but you have everything that you need and a little bit more. You know, you don't need a 360 degree view camera system. This one is optioned with it, which is nice, obviously. This one was also optioned with the technology pack, or I think the technology package includes the adaptive cruise control. I'm not 100% sure on that, but this also has adaptive cruise control. So this has more than you really need. Um, you know, it doesn't have the leather, it doesn't have the sunroof, it doesn't have this, that, and all like the other uh, fancy things that you guys could get. You know, this isn't a ZR2, so this isn't quite as capable off-road, but for the majority of buyers of this, um, you know, I don't think that you're really gonna be taking it to the, its full potential off-road. Maybe you will, you know, I know there are gonna be a few of you that will, but if you need more off-road capability, well, then you could either get the Z71 or you could get the ZR2 if you really do some serious off-roading. The ZR2 is like an out-of-the-box off-road monster. But I think this thing looks great. It's great for daily use, which is very important, I think, to a lot of you guys who want something that looks off-roady. You want to have the off-road capability, but you're not necessarily going to be going off-road every week or, uh, you know, that frequently where you would need something like a Z71 or uh, a ZR2. So I think this is a great alternative to that because it's got the look, but it's still a great daily driver. And yes, you know, it does have a little, it is a little bit bouncy. It's got a firmer suspension-ish, but really for what it is and comparing it to other vehicles in its class, I think the suspension does a great job, again, for daily driving use. Um, also, again, back to the powertrain. I think the powertrain is great. I like the new infotainment system. It's just like pretty much all the other GM infotainment systems from a Chevrolet all the way up to a Cadillac which they all are very intuitive. They're very easy to use. Don't be intimidated by the look of it. I know it looks futuristic, but it is very, very easy to use. Overall, this is a great vehicle, very easy to drive, very easy to park. It's on the smaller side of things, but this one has the 360 degree view camera system, which makes it that much easier to park. And uh, personally, if I was gonna get one option on this vehicle, it would be the technology package because you get the adaptive cruise control as well as the 360 degree view camera systems, two features that I personally would want on my own vehicle if I was getting a vehicle. And especially considering for $42,000, um, I'd say that that is a pretty darn good price for the looks and for the capability and for just the overall great dailiness of this vehicle. So if you guys are interested in this particular one, I'll be sure to have Dwayne's information in the description box down below. But that's it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. Like I mentioned to you guys earlier on in the video, now that I've hit 10,000 subscribers, I am now on my journey to 100,000. So please, if you would, hit that like button. That greatly benefits my channel. I would really, really appreciate it. And then also, if you guys did enjoy the video, also hit that subscribe button. But like I mentioned, that's it for today's video. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.